Nocturnal Word Television Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God in his kingdom. Moved by the Spirit, one who lives in love lives in God. And God lives in him. What a wonderful thing is our church. This whole network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. Well, we just got another great group of family tonight. And on the way down, I thought, what will I talk about, huh? And so, uh, one 12-year-old said, um, Mary. I said, okay. And then somebody else said, Corpus Christi, which is Sunday. And I thought, well, we'll just put these three things together. How do you like that, huh? Now, if you have another idea, raise your hand and we'll... <laughs> I thought maybe if we're going to talk about Our Lady, we need to talk about Our Lady's trust. Trust. I think if there's, if there's one thing we need in the world today, above all other things, is trust. Trust, trust. And most of us don't know what trust is. We think trust is hope. Well, hope, Amer uh, uh, human hope is very faulty. For example, You'll say, well, I hope my kids turn out right. <laughs> Which means, yeah. <laughs> They're right? Hmm? I hope he graduates. Which means you don't think he's going to. Okay. <laughs> I hope my husband's being faithful. Ooh. <laughs> I hope. Now we'll look at men and they'll say, oh, I hope for once she doesn't burn the rose. <laughs> Just once, Lord. Okay. Or I hope we don't have another scene tonight. And so we're always on a level of human hope, always ready to question, to doubt, which means you don't trust anybody. See. So now we're going to look at supernatural hope. Oh, that's different, but that's the basis of trust. I have to trust God because he's worthy of trust. He, you know, I remember the Denver conference, you know, where our Holy Father was in. The liberals had one of these strange litanies. And one of these strange litanies said, Oh God, taker of risks. I said, he's a taker of risks? I said, oh, I mean, what are we going to do if he's taking a risk? <laughs> I mean, if God is taking a risk, we're all in trouble, you know? But see, God doesn't take any risks. Because to God, all things are present. No future, no path. It's all right there. Now, we have to have enough trust, see? And who do we trust in God? I wanted to read you just a few things from Our Lady's life is given in the scriptures. And of course, the first one is when the angel Gabriel came to her and, and changed her entire life. 
I don't know of anybody um, that would want to change their entire life, you know, just because the Lord asked. We all know that poor Zachariah was not impressed with an angel asking and telling him some wonderful things were going to happen. He was finally going to have a son and, and he would be great before the Lord and his name would be John and all these wonderful things. And Zachariah said, well, uh, how can I be sure? <laughs> I mean, he's talking to an angel. He's talking to one of the seven angels that stands before the throne of God. And he says, how could I be sure? If I was an angel, I'd have taken one of my wings and swatted him. <laughs> I would have swatted it. I mean, what do you mean you could be sure? I'm telling you from the Lord God himself. Hmm. And what he said is, I'm an old man, as if he couldn't see that. <laughs> My wife is getting on in her years, as if he didn't know that. <laughs> now, you see, uh, that was a total lack of trust. Absolute. Absolute. He, he didn't believe the Lord God had the power, and the angel struck him deaf and dumb. What a relief for Elizabeth. <laughs> what a relief. I mean, I mean, he must have been a real grouch. And I bet he would look at Elizabeth sometime and say, it's your fault. <sighs> it's all your fault. And I'll bet many times she looked at him and said, will you shut up? <laughs> so now he comes from the temple and he's silent. Whoopee. <laughs> then he tells her this great thing. I'll make a bet she believed. She had what? Trust. Now, when Gabriel, the same angel, goes to Our Lady, she has trust. She says, be it done to me according to thy word. And she didn't know what it said. She said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will cover you with his shadow. See, total trust. And I think if we look in our lives today, sometime examine your conscience. It won't hurt you. So help me, it will not hurt you to examine your conscience. You know, we're, we're so filled with goodies today. You have to be good to yourself. I'm okay, you're okay. No, sometimes you're not okay and nobody else is okay. Life stinks and it stinks and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, there is nothing. And we don't want to admit that because we don't want to admit we'd have, we don't have total control over everything. And you don't have total control. And that's where trust comes in. If you had total control, you'd be the Lord God Almighty. You know, I've got to say something nobody will understand, and that's okay. It'll make you think. The most beautiful thing to me about Christianity, about the gospel, is this total uncertainty. You don't always know. I think it's wonderful. When we began this network, we started with $200 and no knowledge. I didn't know a television from a tube or a wire or anything. And we started this thing and with no knowledge. 
And I can remember everybody said, now you need a director. I, I don't even have a, a, a studio, I need a director. <laughs> you, I mean, these people are highly, you got, where are you going to get money even to pay for one director? I said, I don't know. Well, you need engineers. Where are you going to find them? I don't know. So by the time they realized they didn't know anything, <laughs> uh, they thought the whole thing was foolish. They, foolish. And so one day I did, a, a woman called and she said her husband was a director and he had retired. Could we use him? I said, oh, hey, there's this famous director. See? So he came and he bought three kinds of rugs. A purple, um, a green rug, a, a beige rug, and a red rug. And I came in a studio with way over there, and I said to him, "What is that?" He said, "It's three rugs." I said, "I can see that, <laughs> but what is it?" He said, "It's for a set." I said, "A set?" He said, "Yes." I said, "You just put it on the floor, and you got a set." He said, no. I said, well, uh, what do you put on the rug? <laughs> he said, I got to think about it. I said, oh. <laughs> My wheel started working and I thought, I'm paying him to think. <laughs> so one day I walk in uh, uh, the front door and, and he's like this. He's got a big chart on the floor on the wall. It was all in squares and it has theology, doctrine, had all, every word you could think of that about religion and he's sitting there looking at it. I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm thinking. <laughs> I said, uh, what about? Well, I got to figure out all the programs we need and the kind. I said, okay. So I come back two hours later and he's still there. He's got one word on this big thing. I said, what does that mean? He said, history. I said, oh. And what are you doing? He said, I'm thinking. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. So I come back at five o'clock and he's still there in the same chair looking at this blank wall except for one word on it. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm thinking. <laughs> I said, you're fired. He said, what? I said, you're fired. <laughs> he said, you can't do that. I said, I just did it. <laughs> I figured, I knew I didn't know anything. <laughs> but it didn't cost anybody any money. <laughs> but here was one who didn't know any more than I did, and I was paying him. Did that make sense to you? No. no. Didn't make sense to me. See? Now you say, Mother, you didn't trust him. You're right. <laughs> I did not trust him. Anybody that has to sit eight hours before a blank wall and nothing comes out of his thinking should go. We'll see. That's definite proof that it is beyond the case of hope. <laughs> I could sit there all day. I'd have the same result because I didn't know anything. So there are times in our daily life when we have to admit there's something wrong. Okay. But this is, this is times we work with people, we work with things, and many times we try something that doesn't work. There's just something wrong. 
But that has nothing to do with the kind of trust we are talking about here. We're talking about trust in God. And trust in God can never fail. See, you have to know, as Our Lady knew here, when she said, be it done to me according to thy will. She was absolutely trusting God. She didn't know anything. She didn't know how it would be. She didn't know. She didn't understand. But she said yes. See, yes to God. And hope is always a kind of mystery. Mystery. Faith is an intellectual assent to truth. I, I, I know we had the Feast of the Holy Trinity last Sunday. And I know there are three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But there are not three gods. There's only one God. You say, well, I don't understand that. Well, there's only one of me sitting here. But inside of me are three things just like God, image of God. My memory, my intellect, and my will. And none of them are like. You don't remember with your intellect, do you? Did you ever remember with your reason? Try it. There's nothing there. You can't do that. You remember with your memory, right? You imagine with your imagination. But it's different than your reasoning, isn't it? Totally different. But it's only one of you. <laughs> Thank God. There's only one of me. <laughs> oh, thank God. Now, I have a will. And, and my will is not my intellect. And my will is not my memory, is it? I mean, you had, somebody had to tell you if you weren't here before, hey, that's a great place. And Mother's even more fun, alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said, yeah, that's great. So you thought, well, I can go. I got the money. I have the time. That's your intellect. But until you got on that bus or in that car, nothing happened, did it? It was just a memory. Just a good idea. So you had to do something. And here you are. But there's not three of you, is there? Huh? There's only one of you. That's how you're made to the image of the Trinity. There's only one God. But three divine persons. That's awesome. I can trust that God. I don't need to know the end of the road. You don't need to know the end of the road. And faith to me is a vision. I know you're going to say, oh boy, here she goes. Faith is a vision because you see something nobody else sees. For example, if, there are, if Jesus said, where there are two of you together and you agree, <laughs> it must have been a phenomenon for two people to agree, you know? I'll be in your midst. Well, there are more people than two here. So we know that Jesus is here. He's really and truly here. Well, what makes you say that? Somebody coming in and says, he's here, where, 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 where? Because they don't have faith. See, faith is a kind of vision, isn't it? You see things nobody else sees, see? So that makes, see, it's what happened to Zachariah. He didn't see. He saw an angel, but it didn't impress him one little bit. I had been shaking in my boots. And I would have listened to everything he said. 
I think most of you here would have. You wouldn't have questioned an angel. I wouldn't dare question an angel. You might get it. But he did get it. He got it. He came. I bet those people, when he came out of that big temple, they, he couldn't say a word. They thought, oh. I bet he said no when he should have said yes. <laughs> but see, that, that was, he lacked trust, Our Lady had trust. And faith, she sees something in, in an occasion like that. She saw, and that guy didn't, see. And, and that's one of the things we have to make a difference in our life. We have to see the difference between human hope and supernatural hope. My hope is in the Lord. See, how do I know this network is going to go on for another year? I don't know. Ask me next year. <laughs> then we'll both know. See, you, you, you can't always know. That we don't have any uh, savings or stocks or bonds or you send me stocks and tomorrow morning I'm going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning I'm going to sell it. Right? Why? I don't want any savings. You got to worry about it. I know you need it. You all need savings. If you didn't have it, you couldn't send anything to me. <laughs> but I shouldn't have that, you see, because I have to trust in the Lord God. I, I couldn't work. I could work my fingers to the bone, not be able to pay for this place. But what do I have? I know our Lord wants it. I know our Lord has kept it in existence. I know he will continue. Do I know how? I don't know how. Do I have to know how? Why would I have to know how? What a pain that would be. <laughs> she hopes says, look, I don't know how many people this network is supposed to reach. I don't care if it's even one person in the midst of a jungle. It's okay. If that's what God wanted when he built this place and kept it going, it's okay. And, and see, we have to put ourselves in the arms of Jesus and say, Lord, it's okay. And that's exactly what Our Lady did. It was not only faith, because faith many times is darkness. It was not only hope, because sometimes we hope we don't see, but our trust is in the Lord. See, all of that is up to Him. If we could, if we could learn that one lesson. And you know, the, way, the wedding of Cana was awesome. Here is a wedding, and they're already celebrating seven days. That's a lot of celebration. Can you imagine celebrating for seven days over a wedding? I mean, that's a lot of celebration and a lot of wine. I would suppose by the seventh day, they didn't know what the wine tasted like. <laughs> And the steward said something like that. He says, you know, most people, um, they serve the best wine and then the worst wine later when nobody knows what they're drinking. That's my little addition. It's not in the scripture. <laughs> so I said, well, what happens? But see, they didn't totally run out of wine until the apostles appeared. It says, Jesus and his apostles came to the wedding, and they ran out of wine. <laughs> I mean, that's what it says. 
I am not making it up. That's exactly what it says. At the wedding of Cana, they ran out of wine. Well, Our Lady could have said, well, thank God. (laughs) Now everybody can go home. But she didn't say that. She felt the embarrassment of the couple who didn't have the kind of money that they needed to have a seven-day celebration. And so Jesus comes in and she says, they have no wine. Now, it seems to me a lot of people don't understand this whole passage. We're talking about trust, aren't we? If you remember, it was Our Lady's fiat. She had to say, be it done to me according to thy will. And then the incarnation. The Most High God sent His Son. The eternal Word became man. The Word was made flesh. What a what an awesome gift. So Mary had to do something, okay? At the wedding of Cana, Our Lady's yes, at that yes, the Word was made flesh. Well, now here they're at a wedding, and there is no wine. She tells her son, and what does he say? What is it to thee and to me? Now, a lot of people think that was a kind of correction. It was not a correction. Our Lady, yes, brought him down. Our Lady's do whatever he tells you, brought forth that first miracle. And that miracle made everybody aware this was not an ordinary man. Suddenly, these servants had 30 gallons of water in every jug. And I got a beautiful picture that the crew gave me for Christmas. It's awesome. It shows the wedding, and it shows this servant pouring Water and it's turned to wine and hit your face. It's like he's shocked. See, that was not a correction for a lady. That was, you must begin my public life. You must, what is it? It's not a question, it's a reminder. What is it now? What is it to you? What's it going to mean to me? When I do something about this wine, this water, this this problem, it's going to make the whole world, it's going to begin my mission. What is it to you and me? And she knew what it meant. That's why we got an answer that doesn't seem, you don't know what it meant. So she said, do whatever he tells you. And he said, fill the jugs with water. Water. Now draw out, he said, and bring to the steward. Now these, these servants were pagans. They didn't know who this was. They probably began to giggle, like, hey, you're going to ask me to give him water? And all of a sudden, it was wine. And the steward said to the bridegroom, hey, (laughs) what's wrong with you? My own rendition. (laughs) What's wrong with you? Everybody gives the, the worst wine at the end when they don't know what they're drinking. You gave the best wine now. 
Mm -hmm. Our Lady had total trust. She knew what it meant, and she did what she had to do. So she began. As soon as he performed that miracle, the miracle just went through that village like wildfire. Did you hear? This man must be a prophet. Is he the Messiah? He turned gallons of water into wine. See what happened? And our dear Lord said to Our Lady, you begin now. If you really want me to do something, it's great. My mission will begin. And she did. See? So if you look at Our Lady, you know what amazes me about her is that at the, at the death of Jesus on the cross, she did not have a place to lay his dead body. He had no place to lay his body. She must have prayed. She must have said, Lord Father, we have done your will. Your son is dead. And I don't have a place to put him. And suddenly here comes Nicodemus, a former coward who went to Lord at night, so nobody would see him. He said, I have a tomb. It's brand new. We'll put him there. You can talk about trust, huh? That's real trust, isn't it, huh? Our, our lady knew she was, he was going to die. She knew the scriptures. And they talked together for 30 years before the uh, public life began. 30 years. She knew. She didn't go out at the local, uh, where were they, caves, whatever, by cave. She trusted in the Lord. See? Now, you can't trust in the Lord when you die if you don't have a little six by six. You're going to be in trouble. But Our Lady is an example of trust. How many times have you prayed for something and nothing happened and suddenly like that, it was all there? Hmm? Did you have that idea? Haven't you all had that experience? And, and you're so surprised, huh? Because you lost trust long ago. Hmm. So Our Lady is trust. Her, her acts of trust teach us something. Now, that wedding of Cana was a, a, an example of the Eucharist. Our Lord turned all of those jugs of water into wine. And he didn't say anything. Did you notice? He said, fill the jugs with water. Now, now, draw it out and give it to the steward. He didn't put his hand on the jugs. He didn't say, now, I want you to turn into, wa into wine. Nothing. He said, fill them and give them. Awesome. Our God is awesome. Now, in the Eucharist, in the Eucharist, we turn wine see, into blood, bread into flesh. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has what? Life everlasting. You would never throw that wine now turned into the blood of Jesus down a sink if you believed and knew what it was. You would never take a host out of your mouth or from your dirty hand 
with bubble gum in your mouth and stick it under a, a pew if you knew what it was. See, he said it. If you look in the sixth chapter of St. John, we had this the other day, but there's such a lack of faith today. Why? Because our faith is no longer a vision and an acceptance as truth, what he said. He cannot lie. There is only one liar, and that's Satan. And one day the Lord was talking to the Pharisees. And he said, you're like your father who was a liar from the beginning. Ooh. Wow. The Lord God is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Now when Jesus, Son of the Most High God, says, Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. It is my flesh for the life of the world. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever. And they all left him. Isn't this strange? Nobody left at the wedding of Cana. There was a change, a total change of water into wine. And there's a total change. What was bread and wine is now body, blood, soul, and divinity of the eternal word. If you don't believe that, <clears throat> and Sunday is Corpus Christi, I wonder how many processions there will be in this country. In Mexico, they stay up all night. Peru, in South America, they stay up all night and they cover the road where the procession will go with awesome designs of flowers. They're everywhere. Wherever our Lord, wherever the Blessed Sacrament is going to go, they, they have stayed up for a night, a day and a night, making the most intricate designs out of flowers that everybody's gonna walk on. The first one is Jesus. That's what we call faith. And the hope is there because that hope knows that that hope is true. The spiritual hope, the gift of hope, supernatural hope, tells me it's true. It is true, faith. And I can live by that truth. Not only do I know it's true, that's faith, I can live by it, that's hope. I can kneel at that presence. I can kneel. I can prostrate at that presence. Because he said so. Now, Sunday is Corpus Christi. We're going to have a procession here. You say, well, how many people are you going to have? I don't know. Maybe 20 and maybe 2,000. Who knows? The important thing is that he knows. He knows. This whole city will be blessed. Those even in sin will get many graces of light to reform. Why? Because our priests are going to carry him around the grounds. What's the average person going to see 
a monstrance, a horse, and a lot of people. But what are you going to see Sunday? What do you see when, when he raises that horse and says, this is my body? Well, who do you see? See a horse? Is that what you see? No. We bow, we kneel in adoration for what we really see. Jesus. See? You know, in the life of St. Anthony, there was a man who had no faith. He was an atheist. And St. Anthony was having a, a sermon on the Eucharist, and this man got kind of smart aleck. And he said, I don't believe. St. Anthony said, okay, you don't believe. Oh, look at this. It unraveled in a strange way. Mm. This little black piece of tape is put here so it doesn't do what it just did. <laughs> and he got loose. It's supposed to stay right here. It's one of those things they tell you always works. <laughs> but it doesn't. Anyway, so this man said to St. Anthony, well, I'll prove to you that there is no God in that piece of bread. He said, I will not feed my donkey for a week. And I will put some hay on, one, on the ground, and you come with your host, and we'll see what he does. And Anthony said, okay. So the crowds were there, most of them unbelievers. And then Anthony came with the monstrance, with the host the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. And the man brought the donkey in, and there was the hay that the donkey hadn't been fed for a week. And the donkey came and ignored the hay and went up where Anthony was holding the Blessed Sacrament and knelt down. And he stayed there. Isn't it a shame that the holy ones of God have to perform miracles before our poor minds believe? That we've lost trust in the words of God. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have life everlasting. You see, today we have all kinds of strange things going on. Where is your faith and where is your hope? Jesus said it, it is. I believe it and my hope tells me not only that it is true, that's faith, but I can live by it. I can worship, I can adore, and I can trust that he knows and he loves me. We have a call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Where are you from? From Florida. And what is your question? Well, uh, talking about Our Lady, mm -hmm. she was born without original sin. Right. And she carried... She was, wait, hold on. She was conceived without original sin. That, there's a difference. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay. She was conceived. And she carried the body of our Lord within her. Right. Did she die or... When Father, when Father Mitch Pacwa does the rosary in the Holy Land, yeah. he goes into the church of Our Lady of Dormition, right. which is her falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And I hate to think of Our Lady as having died. Well, uh, I think she would want to follow our dear Lord, her son, in everything. 
You remember when our Lord went to see um, the centurion's, uh, the servant, the, the daughter of one of the high people in, in, the, in the synagogue. And um, he said, my daughter, Jerry, it was dead. She had no use to come, Lord. You know, she died. She's dead. And then he, our Lord went, and all the people were in a professional uh, mourning. You know, they were screaming and yelling and crying. And he said, why all this din? He said, she is not dead. She's asleep. Well, they all knew she was dead. So he goes in, and she was dead, dead. And he says, rise. At uh, Lazarus' tomb, he said, uh, Lazarus, come forth. And, wow, you know, they were, Martha had to be real smart and explain the uh, technicalities of death. She said, Master, he's been dead four days. He stinks. <laughs> you know, it's amazing to me how we try to explain everything to God. Everything. He stinks. The Lord didn't pay any attention, no. And so we are constantly looking at Our Lady as if she did not die. Well, in the eyes of the Lord, she didn't die. She was asleep. Physically, though, her heart stopped, and she was dead. But she imitated her son to the end. He was in the tomb three days, and she was dead three days. But our Lord never, never um, looked at death only asleep because there's a transition. My soul is what's alive here and carries my body along. And my body is a means of practicing virtue and becoming holy. So Our Lady followed her son. And so the Dormition does mean sleep, but Our Lord always looked at death as sleep. When he said somebody was dead, he was talking about the lower region. That's what he called dead. Now, are those in hell dead? No, they're very much alive. Their soul is alive. And one day, none of you don't think of this horrible thing, one day when the general resurrection happens, and some of you, oh, you believe in that. Ah. <laughs> When you're there with the rest of us, you'll believe. Okay? <laughs> and some of you are going to say, you know, Mother Angelica told me about this. And I didn't believe. But now those in hell will also take on their own bodies. Ugly. 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 Ugly, the worst ugliness you could ever imagine, according to their terrible sins. And they'll look awful and forever. Some of you listening to me in the night that just keep goofing off. You get drunk, you're on drugs, you're uh, gay or whatever you are, you commit adultery. You do all those terrible things just like there's nothing ahead of you. Well, let me tell you, if you lose your soul and you're condemned to hell, you condemn yourself to hell. When the general resurrection comes along, are you going to be ugly looking forever? And those in thy kingdom, Lord, will look so beautiful. We have another call. Hello? Hi, Mother. Hi, where are you from? I'm from Massachusetts. And My name what, is Marie. And what is your question? Um, actually, I had a comment. 
Um, you talked about faith and trust, and I just wanted to tell you quickly about um, what's happened in our family. Good. In 19, end of 1994, um, after having four children and my second child is severely disabled, my husband and I decided it would be a good idea to have a vasectomy because um, we thought our plate was full. And my husband was a non-Catholic and I was a non-practicing Catholic in 96. And in 96, we both, I went back to the church by the grace of God and my husband converted. And um, we've, by watching your show this last year, and by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit and Padre Pio, my husband just had his vasectomy reversed. And we did this only to tell God that we were very sorry for what we did for offending him. And we didn't realize how evil it was. So the doctor picked the date, and the date just happened to be the Feast of the Ascension this past month. And um, we, we offered it back up to God. We couldn't have picked a better date to say, God, we're very sorry. You are the author of life, and I'm pregnant. I'm going to be with my fifth child. Right. And um, even though we have great joy in our house, we are related. We'll be married 10 years next month. We feel like we're on our honeymoon. <laughs> there is not much support because of our decision. We have a lot of people very upset with us for right. what we've done. And I just want people to know that when you have faith and trust in God, it's not always going to be easy. There's going to be some crosses to go with it, just like the saints, the apostles, and everybody else. And um, if you could just say a prayer, because we don't know what's wrong with our second child, and we really are putting a lot of trust in God, that this child will be healthy, um, or else let God heal the one that we've got that's already disabled, one or the other, I don't care which. <laughs> well, thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to say a prayer for you, and you can trust the Lord. You already have a miracle, you know? That's what's so awesome. You already have a miracle. Where there is life, there is God. See? There is God. And that's what you have to, you know, what is quality of life? Some people are perfect in every way, but they sin more and more every day. Is that quality of life? No. Mm -mm. Quality of life for those that are crippled and handicapped. and They're the ones that have real quality of life because they don't sin. They don't sin. They're always with God. See? And nobody will know until the kingdom, when they're all perfect, that what their handicaps did to save the world. And so I, I congratulate you. You just hang in there, and our sisters will pray for you. That seems to be our community's special gift from God. We're all celibates, but we're great in praying that you have a baby. <laughs> I know this woman came to me one day and she said they're married 11 years. And they wanted a baby and so forth. I thought, hey, wait a minute, we'll pray for you. And we did, and, and she had twins. <laughs> and, and, and they were all, they were wonderful. See, they've had, I think, six children now. See, and I don't know why God gave us that particular gift, but I think it's wonderful, wonderful. And we all have to know, my friends, that we are here for a short time, a very short time. I was thinking the other day, you know, I'm 75. <laughs> you see that old guy was here last week? He was 85. And he proposed, you know, and he said, will you marry me? And I said, uh-uh. <laughs> said, I'm already married. And he looked at me and said, oh, too bad. <laughs> but 
But see, when I got back upstairs, I realized that in 10 short years, I will be 85. And I thought, awesome. And I said, Lord, let me move as much as I can move, make as much problems for other people that I can make. <laughs> And let me be a thorn in everybody's side as long, as long as they know Jesus. They're repentant. Go to confession. Come back to Jesus. Come back to the church. Come back to the Lord. And while I'm here, I only got one minute. For some reasons, we're about... Oh, a hundred thousand a month now short. And since we don't have anything stashed away, that hundred thousand can, uh, in three, four, five months, can become a real tragedy, huh? So all I'm asking is that those who are giving all the time, thank you, thank you, thank you, a million times. And those who haven't given, may you not sleep tonight. <laughs> And those of you that have a lot, may you not sleep for a week. <laughs> I know.